My quiz has generated over 10,906 leads for my business. It is by far my most popular and fun opt-in for my audience, and therefore it is also the highest converting. Now, it wasn't easy, however, to create such a quite literal lead magnet though. I took a stab at creating a quiz a few years back and it delivered kind of mediocre conversions and lead numbers. Looking back now, I can tell, however, my quiz idea just wasn't all that enticing and didn't play into the psychology of how we think. But after taking a second crack at it, if I do say so myself, I nailed the quiz idea so that people are just falling over themselves to know the answer to the quiz and it's genuinely helpful for my audience and therefore converts like crazy. So in this video, I'm gonna share the key secrets to a quiz which converts and of course how to build the thing and then add it to your Squarespace site. Step number one, this first step is so important. If you get this wrong, implementing all of the other steps is a little bit of a waste of time. So I'd spend a significant portion of my time thinking about this first step. What is it? It is picking your quiz idea and title. Your quiz needs to be something that people actually wonder about and want help with. And the title needs to have what I call the sexiness factor to it. Let me explain. Before building my quiz, I actually joined a workshop hosted by the CEO of Try Interact. That is the quiz platform which I use, and he gave a tip of gold at said workshop. He explained that people are interested in themselves and learning about themselves. So if you can make a quiz which plays into people's interest in themselves, that is a winning quiz idea. Now, you know all of those quizzes which you find out there, like which Disney princess are you? The reason that this slightly ridiculous quiz idea works so well is because people get to answer questions about themselves when they're taking the quiz, and at the end, they learn more about themselves by the result description that they get. So think about how you could ask questions in your quiz, which enables the quiz taker to basically tell you about themselves through their answers and make sure that your results then give them more information about their personality or their character traits or their archetype or something similar. For example, my quiz is which client finding method matches your personality type. The reason that this works so well is because my ideal client, and that is aspiring website designers, they all want to know what the best way to get clients is. And the key is the matches your personality type bit. It indicates that there's a specific client funding strategy which is going to fit them and which they're going to learn about specifically their personality type when they take the quiz. And the key is the matches your personality type bit. It indicates that there's a specific client finding strategy which fits them and that they're going to learn specifically about their personality type in the quiz. Now, if you want to test that quiz, by the way, you can do so at pbcourses.com forward slash quiz. By the way, that workshop with the founder of Try Interact was full of incredible tips. In this video, however, I mostly wanna focus on how to build the quiz itself and put it on your website. So if you do want more tips on creating a winning quiz idea, download the PDF below for five more keys to a successful quiz. I'll also link that up here for you too. Step number two, pick a quiz software. Now there's a few different ones out there, but here are the keys of what you wanna look for. First, it has to have an extremely easy to use interface for the person taking the quiz. The software needs to make it possible for the person to take the quiz first and then be asked for their email address after. Also, the entire point of this is for you to get leads. So you'll also want a software which connects up and directly integrates with whatever email marketing software that you're currently using. And ideally, in a best case scenario, we also want you to be able to map people's specific answers into your email marketing software as well. For example, if you have a question which asks someone, how far along are you in your watercolor painting journey? And they say they're at a beginner stage of painting watercolors and you have a course for beginner watercolor painters, then you would then know who took your quiz is then on your list who is a beginner watercolor painter. So your ability to again map answers to email list subscribers is key. The quiz software that I chose is called Try Interact. I'm super happy with it. It's designed specifically for lead generation and it does have all of the bells and whistles which I need and all the functionality that I need to create the type of quizzes which I want to from scored quizzes to the regular answer questions, get a result type quizzes as well. I have a Try Interact affiliate link below. If you choose to sign up through there, do know that my Margarita Fund thanks you kindly. 
So when you come into the back end of Try Interact to get started with a new quiz, you want to click this button up in the top right hand corner. And now here we have a few examples of different types of quizzes. I wanna again run through with you quickly. Some of these are good quiz ideas. Some of them are really not great quiz ideas. So which zodiac element are you? Great quiz idea. Where is these one? Which type of CRM does your business need? What type of gifts should you give? What should your business do to get to the next level? How solid is your real estate business? Those don't really tell us anything about ourselves. It's sort of assessing, again, how solid is your real estate business? Like what is, what level is your real estate business at or whatever is not as sexy as something like what's your chronotype? What's your zone of genius? Again, these two at the bottom are more examples of telling you something about yourself. And so those are better um, examples. But for this tutorial, we're going to go to the start from scratch option. But just do know as you're going through these examples, some of these are good examples. Some of them are not so great. So examples. Then when it comes to quiz type, we have three different types, the assessment, the personality, and the scored. Again, coming back to the most effective and highest converting quiz type is definitely the teaching your, you something about yourself quiz type. So that would be the personality type is the one that we want to go for. From here, I'll add a title. And so this should be the title or idea or name of my quiz. That's mine. Just going to quickly upload an image. Just choose anything. And take quiz is good. I find you don't really need a massive description. As long as your title is very clear, that's the most important thing, to be honest. You could mention something in the description area about only takes 45 seconds or find out in under one minute. That can be sort of enticing for people to know, oh, it's quick and easy but otherwise I would actually probably leave the description blank. Now let's move along the left-hand side to the questions area. So up here where it says question number one, this is where you want to actually type the content of your question. And when it comes to the question, sometimes you can have it in question format or you can sort of have it as a dot, 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 and then they sort of fill in the blank. That could also be another option. So we have multiple answer options. So it could be, So let's say, for example, those are my three options. I would love to hear in the comments below which of those three you would most likely be doing at a party. <laughs> okay, the other option which you do have with Interact is you can use images. For example, if you wanted to do something like which interior style is yours or something, um, this could be appropriate to add photos. I would say use the photo option when it makes practical sense where you're trying to get someone to select like their style, whereas otherwise you could just go for the text answers. And of course, when it comes to the answers and the question itself, you want it to be as short and concise as possible. You don't want like multiple sentences or paragraphs or anything in here. Then the next thing we need to do is edit the result correlations. Down here, actually, sorry, we go to results. And let's say that there are three different results. Okay, so we have result one, so let's say it is the community leader and I think was another one. Let's say, so let's say for example, those are my three results. So once I've defined my results, I can go back into questions and I can edit the results correlation. So let's say chatting up new friends, that probably relates to the maybe community leader dancing on tables. <laughs> so some of these actually, so interestingly, when you go to think up your questions and your results, it's often best to think of answers, I guess, that would relate to each of these items. You do have the option to make every answer correlate to a result or some of them you can just actually leave blank as is and it doesn't actually connect up to anything. Granted, that's not very useful. So I would encourage you, I just thought these up quickly for the example of this video, but I would actually try to think of answers, which again, directly relates to some sort of result. And therefore it would also make sense to have a consistent number of answers and consistent number of results um, for each of the questions. So as you go to build this out, you'll basically just be adding a new question, adding a new question, adding a new question. And then once you have your results in there, that is good. The other thing which can be helpful is you can put details. So the, the bit that people, that your quiz takers will really want 
is the description. And they really want to know, They again, they want to learn about themselves. So let's say, for example, you have expertise because you've worked with thousands of different, I don't know, people with overcoming a bad breakup, for example. And maybe people fall into four different consistent buckets that you notice after they've overcome a breakup. It is your opportunity. You, because you've worked with thousands of these clients, it's your opportunity to then speak back to that person. Okay, here's what I notice of other people who deal with the breakup in a similar way. Here's everything which I've learned about these people over time. That, again, tells them more about themselves, and that is very helpful. So your description for the result should come in here. You can add an image if you want to, um, and they can also have a call to action button if you would like to. The other option, and I do have this set up on my quiz, um, is to, instead of using these standard pages from Try Interact for the results, you can actually redirect them. So say, for example, I have on my website, I think it's five different results for the quiz, and then I have five different pages, and each page is a different result. And so when someone finishes the quiz and they get, say, the content creator result, it redirects them to a page on my website where I could more thoroughly sort of design it to my taste. And then also I could more thoroughly explain the result because I had an entire page to do it as opposed to just trying to fit it into some sort of like smaller box here. Of course, I think this box actually grows to however much content you put in there, but I just found again, design wise, I actually preferred having the results on my own website. So all you would do to do that is to create a page on your website describe the results and then you would basically say, okay, when someone gets this content creator result, send them to this link on my website. It's quite simple. Next up and very importantly is the lead generation. So I'm going to toggle this option on and then we have a few different uh, questions here. So the first thing is what exactly are we collecting? So the email address in this case, we do also have the option. I would say I personally collect first names because I like to address my emails to the person specifically. Um, so I collect email address, first name, to be honest, the more of these options that you toggle on, the more your conversion rate will go down. So the more difficult you make it to opt in something, the less conversions you get. So do try to balance what you need for your business with what's going to get you the most conversions. Okay, and then coming down to the actual content of the form itself, you can click in here to edit the content. I would say enter your email to see your results is actually a very good and very clear short statement. The We will send you fun and infrequent updates, maybe tweak that to be your brand voice. You can also change up the color on here by going ahead and dragging this little toggle, which is very simple. So we're gonna save that and then save and continue. So as you can see here, they have an absolute ton of email marketing platform options. I am going to select mine. I use ConvertKit and I love ConvertKit. And from here, this is the bit which I mentioned is so, so helpful. So what you can do is when someone gets a certain result, so say they are the content creator, I can then tell it to set, add that person to a form, add a tag to that person, add that person to a sequence, update some sort of field in their subscriber profile. So again, I can basically map the data from the one program into the other, and that is super, super helpful. In ConvertKit specifically, what I would do is I would create a new form in ConvertKit for every single result, and then I would, from the drop-down menu, select that result, and then inside of ConvertKit, this is very ConvertKit specific, so if you don't use this, it might not be relevant for you, but inside ConvertKit, once they join a form, then you can tag them with something. And I mostly use tags in order to organize my email list and to send different groups of people different content. So that is how I would do it. But again, depending on which email marketing platform you're using, that could be different. Now, the other bit which I mentioned is so fantastic is that you cannot just map results to your email list. You can also map the answers to your email list. So you would see on the left-hand side, all of the different questions that you would have in your quiz, you can do the exact same thing where you say, okay, if they said dancing on tables, then I'm going to add them to this form, for example. So again, with my example before, maybe one of the questions that you're asking is how far along are you in your watercolor painting journey? And they said, I'm a, I'm a beginner. That would be perfect if you then had a, maybe even an email sequence which then sent to everyone who is a beginner in watercolor painting to sell them your beginner watercolor painting class. And then automatically it will determine, and it pretty much always gets this correct, that the email address should lead into this area of ConvertKit and the first name should lead to that area of ConvertKit, so that's good. And then we can just test our integration. 
uh, I didn't finish setting up, so it's not going to work for me for right now. But basically, you would hit test integration. When it says success, then you know you are good to go. Now, let's go to publish. And how do we get this actually onto our website? Let's first go to, I'm going to put this onto my Squarespace website. So what I want to do is get the embed code. I'm going to copy the code and then head into my website, click edit on the content, add a section for this quiz. I'm going to add a block to my Squarespace site and I want the code block. I will go on edit to the code block, delete out the current code and paste in my code for my quiz. And I just need to drag this out so it's size wise looks correct. Drag it over. Now, obviously, if I want to design this well, I should change the background section. I could either do one of two things. So this doesn't look great because my background section, background is beige on the Squarespace site. And then the background of this quiz is white, which does not look good. So I could do one of two things. I could change the background color of the quiz and try interact, or I could change the background of this section um, with Squarespace. I think I'm gonna go for this way, save. The other option which they have in Try Interact, which I really love, is the disable cover page on quiz. So if you say have a mention on your homepage of this quiz, and it's, for example, hey, take my quiz, which client finding method matches your personality type, and then they click over to do the quiz, and then it basically says the exact same thing, which client find method matches your personality type, take quiz, they have to basically do the same click twice pretty much, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. So what you can do is you disable the cover page on the quiz. I'm going to recopy the code, delete out the old code, paste in the new one. And then you'll notice that it just goes automatically to the first question of the quiz, which is a lot more practical. So do know that that is an option as well. Okay, so that is the technical bit, but remember the quiz idea is the most important aspect to your quiz being a success. Remember, you can get the PDF with all of my tips on quiz ideas above, and I'll also pop that link for you in the description below too. However, if you're done the quiz, but aren't loving how it's appearing on your website or are maybe struggling with getting your Squarespace site to look exactly the way that you want to, then I just released a video on website trends. So watch it next to ensure your site is looking wonderful before shouting out to the world about your site and your quiz.